Peck's return in Season 3 has been the subject of intense fan speculation, but there are clues scattered around the entire final season that indicate he's been around the whole time. Imperial encryption will be a problem, especially without Tech. With only a few Bad Batch episodes remaining before the show completely comes to an end, surely it's only a matter of time before we get to the truth. So hold on to your helmets and brace yourselves as there seems to be something far darker going on in Season 3 than we initially thought. Why have I been activated? Before we jump into it, if you enjoyed today's video, remember to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you want to catch more. Now with all that out of the way, let's get into it. Target acquired. Returning. So in order to connect all of the necessary dots, we first need to have a complete understanding of who Tech really was and his true significance to the group. Now Tech wasn't just your run of the mill computer wizard and weapons expert, he was the brains with a side of deadpan humour that kept the squad on their toes. While Hunter and Omega grabbed the spotlight, it was Tech who emerged as the young sung MVP of Season 2, even avoiding the team that was hard to fill. In Season 2's climax on a redo, with Clone Force 99 in a bind stranded on a train rail, in a move that's pure tech, he jump starts the train cast back to life, only to find himself hanging by a thread, quite literally, on a grappling cable, as Blaster Fire rains down. It's in this moment of chaos that tech makes the ultimate call, Plan 99 choosing to lay down his life for his brothers in arms. Now fast forward to season 3 and it's palpable. Tech's absence is a spectre that looms over the squad. No matter the mission at hand, he was the mastermind, the numbers cruncher, the one who could outsmart the Empire's tech at every turn, and quite frankly without him, Bone Force 99 is a shadow of its former self, each member grappling with the loss in their own unique way. Tech once saw them as mere soldiers, but their journey through the Bad Batch has debunked that notion. Omega's arrival transformed them, and their fugitive life from the Empire's clutches bonded them, not just comrades, but as a family. So when Tech took the plunge in Season 2, it's no wonder fans were abuzz with theories of his survival, theories that only gained traction with the introduction of the Empire's Clone X division in Season 3. Now of course we do remember the enigmatic Clone X trooper from Season 2, the first of his kind, an Imperial assassin with a mission to bury the secrets of Kamino's assault, only to meet his end shortly after his introduction, which quite frankly is a common theme for these CX troopers, all bar one. Now season 3 peeled back another layer, revealing that these clone X troopers, we'll call them CX troopers for short, were the Empire's elite, brainwashed by the advanced science division to be diehard loyalists. Their past swiped clean, these clone assassins were the Empire's shadow operatives, wired to execute their missions flawlessly. Enter CX-1, the second of the Clone X series we encounter early in Season 3. His tenure like the first was brief, cut short by another of his kind when capture put him at the risk of compromise. The executioner was none other than CX-2, the clone assassin who's been a reoccurring fawn in the side of our heroes throughout Season 3. He's the cat with nine lives, always bouncing back when you least expect it, and judging by the lifespan of the first two Clone X troopers we've seen, Shouldn't we be on CX-10 by now? Unless there's something different with this one. Now let's talk about the Ganex's biggest mystery that's got everyone talking, the true identity of CX-2. It's someone with a past, the clone who's been through the Empire's intense brainwashing bootcamp, and the fan favourite theory that's going around right now is that CX-2 is none other than our beloved tech, back from the dead. You heard it right, the same tech who, as mentioned earlier, in a heart-wrenching twist, executed Plan 99 sacrificing himself to save his squad. But here's the kicker with that, there was no body, no final goodbye, just to fall into the abyss, leaving us all clinging to hope, and the Bad Batch has been dropping hints like breadcrumbs, leading us back to tech. So what's the deal with CX-2? This clone assassin's been shrouded in secrecy, but the signs are all there if you know where to look. From the way he moves to the snippets of knowledge he seems to possess, it's like Tech's ghost is haunting us this series. Now just as I'm editing this video, it's come to my attention that CX-2's name is also very similar to Tech's original clone trooper name, being CT-9902. Now it could be a coincidence, but it's interesting nonetheless. In the Star Wars realm, when a character bites the dust, they're usually given the silent treatment. Take Fives, for example. His death in the Clone Wars barely a peep afterward, but Tech, he's a little bit different. His goggles, a symbol of his intellect and spirit, keep popping up like a reoccurring dream. It's Chekhov's gun in space, every detail matters, and those goggles, they're not just there for show. Echo's reunion with the squad on Pabu hits different. They're trying to crack Imperial codes without Tech, 
and the silence that follows is deafening. It's as if Tech's supposed to be there filling the void, cracking the codes and making a smile with his dry wit. And Omega, bless her heart, she can't let go of Tech's goggles. They're a treasure among treasures, a beacon of hope that maybe, just maybe, Tech's still out there. So, what's the deal with these goggles? Are they just a keepsake? Or are they hinting at something more? Only time will tell, but one thing's for sure, the Bad Batch is playing a deeper game and we're all here for it. Now, let's put our detective hats on for a moment because CX2's grand entrance is no mere coincidence, it's storytelling gold. With CX1 out of the picture, thanks to Captain Rex and Hauser, Scorch steps up to awaken CX2 from his slumber and what's his first mission? To hunt down his predecessor. But the real twist, this all goes down on Tef, a planet whose name is a letter shy of tech. Talk about a cosmic wink. CX2 isn't just another clone with a number, he's a rebel with a cause. His refusal to toe the line, a trait synonymous with Clone Force 99, echoes Tech's own rebellious spirit. Remember Tech's parting words? When have we ever followed orders? That defiance lives on through CX2's actions, as he prioritizes his own mission over direct commands. And here's where it gets wild. CX2 seems to have some serious hardware upgrades as well, cybernetic legs. Crosshair's heat sensor doesn't lie, it's all cold metal from the knees down. This little detail ties back to Tech's own brush with death when his legs were crushed. Could CX2's cybernetic legs be a result of Tech's fall? It's a theory that's gaining traction faster than a speeder bike on Endor. But for me, one of the most telling moments is CX2's showdown with Crosshair. It's personal, it's intense, and it's loaded with subtext. When CX2 tells Crosshair he's on the wrong side, it might not just be about the present, but it could also be a reflection of their shared history. You had your chance to be one of us. You chose the wrong side. It's as if Tech spirit is breaking through a little bit, reminding Crosshair of the choices he made, the family he left behind. When CX2 effortlessly hacks into Freganova's ship, it's like we're watching Tech work his magic all over again, the data rod, talk of encryptions, it's Tech's signature move, repurposed for the Empire's dark agenda. But it's not just the gadgets and gizmos that have us raising our eyebrows, it's the words, the very language that CX2 speaks. Search every domicile until you find her. Search every domicile, he commands, echoing Tech's own choice of words from a past life. I suspect it is your domicile. It's a linguistic fingerprint, a verbal clue that screams, Tech is literally here. And then there's also the way that CX2 handles the truth. He's not about imperial grandstanding or gloating over the misfortune of others. No, he's all about precision accuracy, just like Tech was. And Tech would never have missed a beat to correct a comrade missed sentence. It's an imperial spin on Tech's trademark need to set the record straight. But hang on a minute, because every theory has an Achilles heel, and this one's no exception. Some say CX2 can't be Tech because he had to play detective to find Pabu. And let's not forget, Tech pretty much knew Pabu like the back of his hand. It was Clone Force 99's safe haven, their emotional anchor. Why would Tech need a map to find his way home? But here's where it gets interesting. Crosshair spills the beans about the Shadow Agents. They're not the clones they used to be. The conditioning by Hemlock is more than just a loyalty switch. It's a reboot of sorts. So if CX2 is Tech, his amnesia could be the Empire's doing side effect of becoming a shadow agent. So is our beloved Techie really the one behind the mask? Or is this just another twist in the galaxy far, far away? Now it's your turn to be the judge. Drop your thoughts and theories down in the comments below. Do you buy into the idea that Tech is pulling the strings of CX2? Or do you think we're chasing ghosts? Let's get the discussion going. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into the Bad Batch, don't forget to leave a like on the video. It really helps out the channel. Subscribe if you want to catch more theories, breakdowns, and all things Star Wars. Until next time, may the force be with you always.